Hello you bearded bastards and welcome back once again to the watchful eyes. Right now it's the 4th of Granite 1218. We've been traveling for a couple of days and we're up here far to the north. It is freezing outside and we had just weathered a terrible blizzard. But at long last our goal is in sight. The strap reigned, a necromancer's tower. Here's hoping we can put an end to the evil doings going on there. Our small party moves in. Alright, here we are. We've moved up to the area and it looks much like that first necromancer compound. There are structures all over the place, including these barrow mounds. This one does seem to be a bit different, more like a, a short tower. But regardless, we can hear something inside. Not sure if this is a very active compound or what, but hearing sounds inside the very first structure is a, a sign. Good sign, bad sign, hard to tell. Also, gotta note that Fishface's beetle, Big Blue, had to be left behind. It started panicking, probably for the best. It was pretty badly wounded by that giant snowy owl. Gotta do what you gotta do. Anyways, we have Kogan leading the group. He and Fishface have the best eyes. Yeah, we're just outside, and we heard a bunch of noise in there. Alright, screw it, let's just go. We're rushing around the corner. Oh, don't see anything yet, but something is talking right over there. Doesn't notice we're here yet. Oh, but here we are. Something just moved out of the shadows. Something we've never seen before. It appears to be a small, eyeless humanoid with a pair of spindly antenna. Its black skin is leathery. A necromancer experiment. Hmm. Very interesting. Ted's gonna bull her way forward and strike up a conversation. We seem to have caught the thing off guard. It's okay. Remain calm. I assure you, I'm quite calm. Oh, oh boy. Looks like we have two of them now, but they don't seem aggressive. And you know what? We do not have a beef with these guys at all. Unless they serve a necromancer, which I guess I don't doubt. It'd be awfully silly for a necromancer's experiment, Ted, to go around killing necromancer's experiments out of hatred. So we're just trying to calm things down, gonna take it easy, see what they know, if anything. Who are you and what are you doing? I am a follower and warrior of Kumil Paddled Slide. Well, they seem to be fighters, though they're not dressed for the part. They're just kind of dressed as peasants. They don't have any weapons, and they don't appear hostile either. Who runs this place? A necromancer, I would assume. The ancient thorns control Straprain. We have the right in all matters. Kumil Paddled Slide, the necromancer that created these people. Very, very interesting. Well, you know, this isn't exactly turning out the way I thought it would. Like, at all. Alright, well, seeing as how these people aren't aggressive, how about we have ourselves a look around, eh? Is that a weapon? Perhaps you should keep it sheathed while here. Oh, you know what? Okay, fine. We'll put our weapons away. And <laughs> just kind of heading into this place here. And, uh, yeah. Let's scope it out real quick. See what we're working with. You know, it's fairly obvious, creepily obvious, that these things used to be elves. Just judging by their clothing and the, uh, well, there's a grown wooden spear on this pedestal over here, being tended to by this soldier. Yeah, very interesting. I will say that they don't seem unhappy, that's for sure. They have a nice place here. Clothing, food. Oh, there's another statue down here. A couple of wooden statues, one of elves. Hmm. <laughs> Memories of a distant past. But yeah, not too bad. They seem like nice people, which complicates things, I suppose. If that necromancer is here, and these people still do serve them, wh what's our justification, I guess? It seems like it might be wrong to just lump all the necromancers together into a single category, especially if this one does turn out to be a, a good one, which is a dubious thought. The world's seen good necromancers before, and they're only ever nice till they get their way. Yeah, I guess we'll keep looking around the place. See what we can see. Let's go, eyes. Well, looks like we have another barrow over here. This one a more traditional pyramidal shape. Let's head in. Seems quiet. Quiet enough. Got some statues in here. Stairway leads through a hatch. Oh, whoa, 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 what is this? Alright, Kogan now is face to face with this nightmare of paddled slide. This is a very large, hairy maggot. It has a short tail. Its charcoal hair is unkempt. 
This night creature was first created accidentally by the dwarven necromancer Kumil Paddleslide of Straprained, after horrible experiments gone wrong on giant crows. Holy hell, that's a bad one. Can we run from the thing, do you think? Back down the stairs? Okay, we got down the stairs, and, well, it didn't seem to follow us at all. I thought for sure it was going to try to maul us or something, but I guess not. Maybe it really is just friendly. Um, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be. Strange. Didn't really expect it. Um, don't, don't know what to say. There's a couple more of those soldiers up here alongside that monster, and they're just kind of carrying on a conversation. This crow maggot is just kind of standing here staring at us. It seems fairly harmless, actually. Huh. Okay. Well, it seems all the creatures here are far less aggressive than we originally thought. Unfortunately, I think that's going to make things a little bit more complicated when we do find that necromancer. But that's a bridge we'll cross when we get to it, I suppose. Come on, guys. Let's keep searching around a bit. We spent the next few hours searching around Strapped Rain, but did not find much of interest. Just happy, fairly content people, seemingly living out fairly normal lives out here in the north. No evidence of evil or wrongdoing. No growing armies. Terrible plots. Nothing like that. But we still had not searched the main tower, or seen any signs of that necromancer that everyone was talking about. Most likely they were inside. Well, here it is. The main tower of Strapped Rained. Looking much like you'd expect it to look. An ancient spire of ragged stone jutting up out of the red earth. But I don't suspect it'll be any more intimidating than the rest of this place. Probably just filled with more friendly faces. Uh-huh. Having a step in, we could see a finely appointed hall. There are some ancient wooden statues set up around the place. Well carved. These people do seem to favor wooden statues of elves and forgotten beasts more than anything. There's a soldier of Kumil milling about the area, dusting some of the statues or something. Nothing offensive, that's for sure. Got a few books scattered around in this side room right here. Some sort of a study chamber or something. Mm, I suppose we'll leave them for now. But we'll probably have to come back. Let's see if we can find this Ku meal everyone's talking about. Oh, the necromancer is found. Didn't take too long. Just in this back room here. We seem to have caught her a bit off guard. Hello, necromancer. My name is Ted. Hello, Testry. I am Ku meal paddled slide. Pray suicide. Not an excellent way to start your case, my friend. Listen here, necromancer. What have you and your creations been doing here? What are you up to? Nothing. Who do you work for? <sighs> I've got things to do. Go away. Reveal what you have been scheming or suffer the consequences. Scary. You done? Yeah. <clears throat> Tell me what you've been scheming or you will suffer. <sighs> you must have better things to do. Ugh, this is stupid. When you get down to it, Ted's pretty fiery, but just remembering what this place looks like, it's not overtly terrible, I guess. I mean, it's terrible, but it doesn't appear evil. Blech. Oh. Oh, dear. What just happened, though? Wow. You really killed her there. Fish face. Slayer of cool meal paddled slide. No, there's no need to celebrate. All right. So, I mean, I really was just going to leave this necromancer, but, well, it kind of looks like Dodak took it into her own hands and hit her in the head with her flail. Fish face. <laughs> oh, no. What'd you do? Kumil Paddled Slide is dead. I guess it could be considered grimly satisfying. Dodak, what did you do? We have to remain calm here. Oh, I'm very calm. Well, self-control. You have to master yourself. I guess I'm not so sure. Well, this is dumb. Okay. Uh, plan B, I guess. I mean, we did come here to kill necromancers, I suppose. There's a solid chance that this one was evil. I guess we'll just have to, uh, assume that was the case. But just so we can get out of here, I'm gonna stuff this corpse in my backpack. And then we're gonna hit the road. Actually, on our way out, I think we're gonna snag all of the books in this place, too, if we can. Yeah, let's just keep this ball rolling. No going back now. Well, after that whole fiasco, we left the place but didn't go very far. Right outside town, for the most part, and made camp. 
still very cold, but we still felt like we had unfinished work here. Strapped rain would hopefully no longer be a future threat to Oridashi, but I suppose you could never know. Not knowing what to do with the necromancer's body, we did leave it within the boundaries of town, but other than that we spent the rest of the time camping. We were attacked several times by dingoes, dingo men, and some giant dingoes. They have a bit of a dingo problem up this way it seems. Didn't have too much trouble with them thankfully. And after about a week of camping out in the frozen tundra, we did return to Strapped Rain. Walked around the place just to try to get a feel for the people. And they seemed mostly in good spirits, fairly unchanged. In fact, one of the soldiers of Kumil didn't even know who Kumil Paddled Slide was, which seemed strange and another of them even seemed happy that the necromancer was gone. So it's been rough trying to figure out what sort of relationship is going on here. One of the best bits of news is that a trio of these soldiers of Kumil agreed to join us in our cause, which is just excellent. It's also worth mentioning that we did try to take one of those crow maggot things with us, but didn't quite pan out. It escaped from us while we weren't watching. Regardless, we were out here in the north with some new allies and still felt like there was some good we could do out this way. After all, we hadn't done that much, and so our growing party spent the remainder of the following week searching through the Northlands. As we traveled, it became clear that these northern forests were tended by the responsible roses, the northernmost elven empire of Oridashi. Well-tended forests seemed to stretch out boundlessly in all directions, and now that the snow had cleared, we could finally appreciate the sight. The going was peaceful enough as the days passed, besides the occasional encounter with the local dingoes. But on the 23rd of Granite 1218, as we made our way towards yet another elven forest, we stumbled upon a mysterious group of shrouded figures. What fool dares to intrude upon my lair? Well, we've certainly just walked into something. It's fairly unclear what's going on here, but if I had to wager a guess, I'd say this elven settlement is under attack by this necromancer. A human necromancer. A naked human necromancer. Alongside some zombies. Quite a few of them, too. This is going to be some real trouble, I think. But you know what? That's what we're here for. Finally, a challenge. Watchful eyes, let's do this. Gonna have Ted drop her backpack and all of her books, then move over and mount Blunt Hatchet, and now we're charging into battle. Ami was already there. Go forth, my undead horn. Destroy them! <laughs> Whoa, we are in some serious trouble right now. There's an absolute horde of zombies in the forest back there. We didn't see them at first, and now the party is all scattered out. This could be some serious bad news. On top of that, Blunted Hatchet is now panicking. Going to jump off the beetle. Damn it, I think we're stuck in the saddle. Alright, we jumped away. Good luck, Beetle. Okay, we're off, and now we have to run. Let's go, Watchful Eyes. We really have to get out of here. We can't fight all of these. Way too many. Come on, Fishy. Amiwa, Kogan, grab your animals. We have to regroup. Wow, that was uh, a bit risky right there. <laughs> but we managed to get away fine. Everyone, including the soldiers of Kumil, who I keep forgetting about. We managed to escape and did regroup nearby, not too far away, but far enough. It was time to get a bit tactical with our planning. There's no safe way to run and then try to take on all those zombies, but we had to take out that necromancer. That one seemed like a serious bad deal, but we were already in the process of formulating a bit of a plan, a very devious plan, and one that was very likely to work. The watchful eyes felt more hopeful by the second. Okay, so here we are. You know, what we realized is something zombies don't mind so much are other zombies. And luckily for us, we have access to a very reliable Risen Stalker, who was able to shamble his way right up here and just slip in amongst these bastards. Not a problem to speak of. You can see right now he's sitting here amongst this pile of uh, garbage. Well, it's not garbage really, it's elven stuff. Furniture. Looks to be a whole bunch of uh, chests and cages. Nothing too, too interesting. Bunch of zombies in the area. 
As you can see, there's a few dogs here. A uh, goblin kobold. There's a kangaroo person over there. But yeah, they're cool. They don't care at all. You know, something interesting we noted is that right over here on the ground, you can see the corpse of a goblin. It was here when we got here. And having a look at it, well, you'll notice it's surrounded by armor. Familiar looking armor. Like here on the ground, there's a bismuth bronze helmet sized specifically for goblins. Yet yeah, on the helmet is a rendition of a capuchin man. Yes, that means this goblin here is part of the Beardless Baron's forces, a scout most likely, all the way up here in the north. Remember how far away we are from Scorchfone, which is down in the south. The Baron's scouts must be wide-ranging. Terrifying, really. Kind of puts things in perspective. If one of the Baron's scouts could be way out here, then, well, that could be anywhere. Nothing else very interesting. Just a bunch of armor. But over here, back at this pile, you know what? I realized we hadn't looked in these chests, and... Well, I suppose it couldn't hurt. Whoa, have a look at that. The first chest we opened is absolutely stuffed with, well, coins mostly. Copper, gold, silver, thousands upon thousands of them. Yeah, I don't know what this necromancer's deal is, but the guy has been busy. If I had to guess, I'd say the guy's been roaming the countryside with his undead minions for a long, long time. I'm sure the local elves would be appreciative if we got rid of this threat. Might be some bonus reputation points in there. Noted. Coins? We'll come back. If we head down this slope over here, Amiwa had spotted that necromancer already. He's just down here. Is sitting by this ruby-encrusted codex. One that Ted dropped. Must be something interesting in there. Let's strike up a conversation. Hello. My name's Amiwa. Hello, elf. I am Galeo Merchedwebs. This servant of a rain greets you. Who rules this place? I rule Spun Diamond. I obviously do. How can you not know this? Do you have a firm grip on these lands? I don't know. Can't you see I'm busy? And your forces? Do you have patrols or guards? Why are you asking me these things? What are you up to? Where is Spun Diamond? We're here! This is Spun Diamond! Why are you asking such stupid questions? A deed is done. Now then, we'll just head back over to that treasure pile and take some coins, how about? Might as well. Not gonna do any good out here with these corpses, that's for sure. In addition to a whole load of gold coins, Amiwa grabbed the necromancer's corpse as well. We might need it if we're gonna prove to those elves that we actually killed this guy. And so with coins and corpse in tow, Amiwa returned to the group. But things were not as we had left them. The watchful eyes had come under attack. A modest mob of zombies ambushed the group while they were waiting. A hard battle ensued, and we did not go without losses. We lost a posse, one of the soldiers of Kumio, as well as a horn beetle, blunted hatchet, Ted's faithful mount. A shame, but ever practical, Ted took it in stride. The beetle died a hero and would be well remembered as one of the finest mounts ever to bear a Testries warrior. Having snapped off a chunk of blunted hatchet's horn, the group turned and once again hit the road. As it was already approaching nightfall, the watchful eyes decided to make camp nearby. But it was not a restful night of sleep at all, because it soon became blatantly obvious that something went terribly wrong with their recent adventure. The woods that surrounded them were alive with the dead. All night long, zombies prowled through those forests. Zombies that had once been under the control of Galel. A terrifying prospect. This would not bode well for travelers in the area, or for the local elves, and perhaps feeling a bit guilty, they decided they'd do some zombie hunting, in an attempt to rein in the unleashed hordes of undead. Actually really stunned at the number of zombies that are walking around, well I should say that's what I assume they are, roaming around near that camp. It wasn't like that before we approached. I should say too that, um, well one of our giraffes has gone missing. So at this point, all we have is the one giraffe left. Not much in the way of mounts. Anyways, right up here, I thought I heard some zombies. I'm gonna have a look real quick. Not seeing too much. I could have sworn they were right here. Um, well, that group did appear to be moving fairly quickly, so maybe if we go a little bit farther. Actually, we appear to be entering a foggy area now. There is a heavy blanket of fog enveloping everything. 
gonna make things a bit more difficult, I think. Oh, but here we are. Watchful eyes, let's do this. Should be a bit easier, I'm hoping. And, uh, yeah, that wasn't too bad at all. Not sure if there was any more than just the one. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to keep looking. Well, let's get to it. Watchful eyes, the hunt continues. Oh, hold up here. What the hell is going on? I thought we ran into some more zombies, but... Well, it looks like our remaining giraffe is attacking Amiwa for some reason. I don't know if it's just confused or something. Maybe it mistook him for being just a normal zombie. I don't know, whatever the case, I think we're gonna have to put it down. Not many other options, unfortunately. Not at this point. Damn it, okay. <sighs> Alright, that's gonna do it for mounts. Looks like we're traveling on foot. Let's go, guys. We gotta get down to business here. The hunt continues yet again. This time it's for real. For the next day and a half, the watchful eyes continued searching through the forest on their hunt for the undead. The search went well, as they encountered many more stragglers, and even a small group of zombies, which they managed to dispatch with little trouble. Though on the 24th of Granite, 1218, as the sun began to set in the western sky, yet another group of corpses descended upon the watchful eyes, and this one was to be a fateful encounter. The battle was started in high spirits. They were bolstered by their recent encounters, but as the fight raged on and the corpses began to pile, they realized they were being overwhelmed. The pained howls of one of their newest companions, a Kumil soldier, could be heard as the undead piled up on top of them. But with so many zombies around, there was little they could do. The watchful eyes continued with great skill and vigor, and eventually, the corpses lay still yet again. But three new corpses lie amongst the rotting heaps, both of the Kumil soldiers, and a Gorlek, Kogan. It appears he had tried to reach the poor Kumil soldier who had been taken down by zombies, but in his attempt to save them, was in turn taken down himself. The tolls of this trek had begun to mount, yet remaining ever practical, their leader, Ted, forced them to move on. But only after the grisly task of sufficiently mangling the corpses had been completed, lest some fledgling necromancer in the future encountered this ready-made army. Though, before they could go through with him, Amiwa, the Risen Stalker, stepped forward. It seemed the elf had a plan, a plan that the three of them had seen played out in the past, a grisly spectacle, but one that held the promise of returning their deceased friend to life. As vile as the idea was to the Tesri's warrior, the three remaining watchful eyes agreed that it was the correct course of action, and so with barest hope in their hearts, the three continued on with their grisly task. Man, I don't even know if this is something that could work. I, well, okay, we're getting a little strange here. We don't like necromancers still, but I guess we kind of need one if we want Kogan back to life. It would be pretty helpful to have another uh, intelligent undead. I mean, we don't have any problem with them, necessarily. It's it's all kind of murky, honestly, when you get down to it. What I know we want, though, is to bring our friend back to life. And if we have even a small chance of that, then, well, I suppose it'd be worth it. Though, I was having a look at our map, and there really isn't any other towers up here in the north. We did do a good amount of exploring in those past weeks, and yeah, there's not much. A lot of swamps, lots of forests, lots of elves. Yeah, not much else. But fortunately, only after a short time of searching, 
Nearby, they found another camp, much like the previous one they encountered. Approaching, they could already hear the sounds of the undead, which meant that surely another necromancer must be nearby. And sure enough, there was. A twisted soul with dark ambition, it was in her withered hands that the hopes of their friend Kogan lie. Hello you bearded bastards and welcome to the end of the episode where we're going to be talking about some behind the scenes things. First, let me start off by saying I'm not going to be the most happy bubbly person this time around. Rather, I guess I am going to be, but uh, let me tell you, this episode here has been a giant pain in my ass. I know, I, I think I've said that a couple times now about uh, <laughs> even the Watchful Eyes episodes here. I, I guess they're just a pain. This one here though was like a special pain. In a big way. Well, like, for example, there was those soldiers of Kumil, those uh, necromancer experiments, the elf things. I thought it would be really cool to start a fortress kind of like based on those guys, right? You know, we took down the necromancer's tower. There's a whole bunch of these people in there. And, you know, we could start up a new fortress, use their help, kind of like play it that way, right? But I could not for the life of me figure out how to start a new fortress using these guys. I couldn't make adventurers that started off as that race. Okay, but that's not a problem. I could just go in as Ted and like recruit a bunch and then bring them to a new fortress, right? Or kind of like we did with the Chamber Point series, start up a new area and then start a fortress on top of that and just make sure there's a bunch of these soldiers of Kumil in there. It's all very complicated and it took a long, long time. It was one of the days of recording and I just kept trying different things to get this whole idea to work, but I could not do it. And God, that is frustrating gonna try this little thing just gonna tweak this little thing over here maybe this will work nope 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 nothing at the beginning of this series i think i said um we're gonna start like maybe some fortress at some point try some new crazy things and you know what it turned out that this crazy thing here didn't work didn't work at all that's fine but still on the subject of this episode being a pain in the ass after that whole fiasco there i was like all right just straight up adventure mode let's just keep looking around see what we can see necromancers let's get them we encountered that guy in the woods at his little camp there with all those zombies. Excellent. That'll be fun. Started recording that and I figured we could just go in and start smashing these zombies apart. And the first couple of tries there, like I know we ended up running away, but that was only because when I started fighting these zombies, the game would crash eventually. And I tried a couple times too. It looked fairly promising. We would have suffered losses if we got through the fight entirely, but it would always crash at like the halfway mark. And see, this is what's interesting to me. I hope this doesn't destroy your immersion too, too much, but I just like to give you that behind the scenes look. So at one point while we were fighting this giant horde of zombies, Fishface died. But then she was brought back to life by that naked necromancer guy as an intelligent undead, which was excellent. That was very interesting. From a story standpoint, I thought it was pretty cool. But as the fight continued beyond that point, the game crashed. So I lost that little story bit right there. But you know, whatever, tried again. And in another of the fights, Ted died, which could have been interesting as well. But again, the game crashed. I don't know what it was. I think it has something to do with one of the, uh, the zombies that was in the conflict. It seemed to happen when I was trying to target specific zombies. Like I'd go to aim at some of their body parts and the game would just freeze up and I couldn't do anything beyond that point. But yeah, that's kind of why we uh, just kind of ran away and came up with the idea of Amiwa going back by himself, which was pretty interesting. I like the way that worked. And it's also how we got the idea of trying to bring Kogan back to life. I will say that at this point, I don't know if it'll work. This necromancer that we just encountered is a totally different necromancer. They might have different abilities. The corpse might not be so fresh at this point. It's been a couple of days. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. My bearded bastards, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I certainly hope to see you next time here with the watchful eyes. And until then, you bearded bastards. Mm.